Hi, I'm Judith Jones from the Manitoulin Phragmites Project, and this video is going to show you what to do if you have Phragmites on your shoreline or on your marsh, how you can control it and maybe eventually get rid of it. Um, we're filming this on Manitoulin Island in northern Ontario in Canada, and these things that we're doing today apply to Phragmites in eastern North America. If you're watching from Europe or some other part of the world, this may not apply to you. In our area, Phragmites is a very aggressive, invasive foreign grass that can take over your shoreline. You can find out about what Phragmites can do if you don't control it in other videos and from other links. So you wear a pair of old running shoes, uh, I like to wear socks and a pair of lightweight long pants that you don't care if they get wet. The reason to wear shoes is because once you cut the frag, all those little stubs that are down on the bottom, they're sharp. So if you're just wearing flip-flops or sandals, you could get cut. So this video is going to discuss two techniques that you can use. One for Phragmites in water, about knee deep, and the other for Phragmites when it's not in water. One of the easiest ways to get frag under control is to drown the roots. So if we cut Phragmites in water, shallow water, cut away all the stems that are above water, the roots will starve of oxygen and they will drown. So this is a really simple thing to do. Do it on a nice warm day, middle of July, middle of August, in there before the plants have seeds on them. So cutting in water, there's a lot of different kinds of tools you can use. Here are some of the ones we use. When we're cutting Phragmites, we are cutting, not pulling. It doesn't pull out, it's got wicked roots. Um, these work really well. Um, the flagging tape is in case you drop it in the water. It makes it a little bit easier to find. A uh, knife is good. Uh, I like a little bit bigger knife, a little bit bigger handle. Flip-flop, same thing. Makes it so if you drop the knife, it floats. And this is a new tool we've been using, which is absolutely fantastic. It's a raspberry cane cutter. Um, it has a telescoping handle, and it makes it so that you don't have to bend over to get to the bottom of the plant. And we'll show you how all of these things work in the water. First of all, you should make sure it really is Phragmites, because there's a lot of tall grass in our world and not all of it is Phrag. So let's go look at some of the lookalikes. So this is a Phragmites lookalike. It's called reed canary grass. It's an indigenous natural grass in North America. It's not invasive. It also grows in water. It grows sometimes intermingled with Phragmites. This grass blooms in July. So in July, if you see a grass that's got flowering tops on it, it's not Phragmites. Phragmites blooms late August all through September. Also, this grass, if you take the leaf away from the stem and you look inside there, you'll see a little membrane, a little shirt collar where the leaf goes around the stem like this. It's like a little shirt collar flipped up. Phragmites has no shirt collar. This one does have a shirt collar. So that's one way that you can tell. This grass is also a lot softer. In the fall, this grass, when it dies back, it falls over. Whereas Phragmites are very hard and in the fall it stays standing like reeds of bamboo. This is another thing people often confuse with Phragmites. These are cattails. Cattails are the things with those fuzzy brown hot dogs on the top. Phragmites never has those. <laughs> um, with cattails, all the leaves come from the base. There isn't a single stem with leaves coming off the way a, a corn stalk is. With this, everything comes from the bottom. This is actually a very small patch of Phragmites. Um, it's sort of a manageable thing. You could come out and work on it a little bit go back another evening, work on it a little bit more until you get it done. So to cut it, if you're using a knife, you have to reach all the way down to the bottom where you feel the sand and cut. Phragmites floats and it spreads because any piece that floats away, as long as it has a little node, can sprout. So on this one, there are roots coming out of all these nodes and another little root sprouting out of here. So when you cut Phragmites, you have to pick up all the pieces and keep all the little bits from floating away because they can sprout somewhere else. So if I've got little pieces, I usually stick them in the garbage bag so they don't float away. These ones aren't really going anywhere very far. So I just reach down, cut it right at the bottom. As long as it's hot and dry, the plants dry out quickly. Once they're dry, they're dead. They're not going to spread. They're not going to sprout. Um, don't put it somewhere wet because then it could maybe sprout. But anywhere dry, once they're dry, you can burn them, uh, you can take them to the landfill, or you can just leave them if they're not in your way. When Phragmites is not in standing water, it's much harder to kill it. 
it's much harder to control it. It has a really extensive root system under here and really nothing kills the roots. So what we can do is we do a technique called spading with a spade. You don't actually have to dig it up. All you have to do is put the shovel in at an angle and slice in. And what happens is you're interrupting one part of the rhizome from talking to the other part of the rhizome. And if you do it right, you come out with a piece of the root. You don't take the whole root, but you do get a piece. And over a few years, it will knock it back. We've had really good success in this marsh with spading. So what you're doing is you look, start about this far away from the stem, put the shovel in at a 45 degree angle, give it a boot. I like to use the shovel for leverage and pull the stem out. There are other ways to deal with larger patches. If you have more than you think you could ever cut, um, we also use gas-powered brush cutters. It usually takes a team of three minimum because you have to carry all the frag out of the water. We also work with people that uh, have larger machinery, floating cutting machines called the Truxers. They come from the Invasive Phragmites Control Center in Southern Ontario. Um, so there are other options for larger patches. But I would say that uh, just get started because there's a difference between control and eradication. Control means it's there, you keep it where it is, you keep it from spreading. So if you have a large patch, get started. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for checking us out. Good luck with your frag. Don't get discouraged, get started. You can find out a lot more on the Facebook page for the Manitoulin Phragmites Project, Phragmites, P-H-R-A, G-M-I-T-E-S. Uh, there's a pamphlet there you can download that tells you a lot of what we've covered today and it has links on it to other places where you can find more information. Thanks a lot to the Gosling Foundation for supporting this video, to all the volunteers that help us frag all across Manitoulin Island, and to you guys for watching. <laughs>